Shalom, shalom, everyone. This is Sister Affion, and we are joined today on our women's class every Tuesday. And today's class is a special class. We are going to talk about what is a woman. We have heard over the Internet and over, the so- over media, social media, there has been a clear attack against what a woman is. And we are going to spend time today with the ladies giving our personal description of what a woman is. And I am going to go first. We've come up with a couple of sentences of what we think a woman is and to clearly define to the rest of the world what a woman is. So I'm going to start first. Wisdom is a woman, and a woman is wisdom. A woman is complete within herself. A woman has a womb, and only she brings forth life. A woman is a mother, is the mother of all living. That is my definition of a woman. Okay, and I would like to, well, you know what I was thinking yesterday, I was talking to a young man yesterday, and he asked me, he was like, what is the significance of the Garden of Eden? Because I think it's an allegory. I, uh, he said, I think it's metaphoric. You know, I understand that people believe that it's real. And this was a young man. He was in his late 20s, early 30s. He was like, he, most people don't think it's real. He said, but I don't think it's, I just think it's meant to be an example. And I told him, I said, that is the most powerful, the most powerful book in the Bible itself. Because what I think I have realized is the whole female aspect, whether it is a female human being, whether it is a female beast, whether it's a female fowl, whether it's a female fish, everything that's born must come through the female womb. However it's set up, this is how it's set up, this is what it is, and this is how the Most High set it out. And then I proposed a question to him. I said, if a man was to have relationships with a woman and he was to release his seed inside of a woman, and there was nothing to attach itself to. I said, what would happen? He was like, nothing. I said, not only does she have a womb, but she has a seed. I said, and it's amazing because in the book of Genesis, he said, when, when the Most High was passing out punishments, he said, I'm going to put a hatred between you and the woman. He was talking about loose for the serpent. He said, and I'm, I'm going to put enmity between her seed and your seed. And it just amazes me how that everything that he created has a seed within itself. So if you want to identify a woman, a woman, like you said, has a womb, she brings forth life, and she has a seed within herself, and a woman has wisdom. I would have to agree. Um, you know, so that was my standpoint. I wanted to make that really clear because, like you said, you know, if there's an attack on what a woman is. Everybody wants to be a woman, but the women are created in the womb. And, you know, so I, that's just how I feel about it. Anybody else? Somebody else want to say something? Oh, I can give my definition. Okay. A woman is an adult female. She possesses two X chromosomes and reproductive organs that includes ovaries and a uterus. Her body undergoes changes starting with a menstrual and ending in menopause. She is strong, intelligent, and passionate. She is the backbone of the family. That's very good. I, I wouldn't. I didn't even think about that. That is very, very good. I agree with you. Anybody and I think else? that's something people overlook is that there's no kind of surgery that's ever going to be able to let anyone, man in particular, have those things. There's no surgery to create a uterus or ovaries. You have to be born with it. It's true. 
And we, we have an extra hole. I hate to put it bluntly like that, but that there's an extra opening that we have that's already set up like that in the womb, and, 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 it, and it stays that way for the purpose of giving birth and for the purpose of procreating. And, and you know, no matter how many surgeries you have, they can't duplicate that. It just can't be duplicated. I mean, they could try, but it's almost like the Most High has put a fail-safe in place from a medical standpoint where it's difficult to do. Difficult to do. It is something. And then from a relationship standpoint, in terms of a woman in a relationship with a man, um, how do you feel about that? I mean, because somebody had to put something together with that being this is our, our women's call every Tuesday. So did anybody put something together about where she stands in the relationship and the power that she yields in the relationship? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think what is it, um, the sis was saying that she had put something together like that, you know, in terms of what a woman is in a relationship. I mean, you know, why? I just have a question, Sister Afghan. Why do you think it's such a big deal for men to want to become women? What I mean, you know, what what is that all about? I'm trying to try to figure that out too. What what the uh, whole, I guess, attack is? You know, why all of a sudden? You know, in this last, you know, 20 years or so, because this wasn't like this, you know, 40 years ago where men were clamoring to, you know, be identified as a woman or, or getting sex changes. And I'm I'm still trying to figure out what is it that's making people, one, envious towards women. There's been clearly an attack. But then in this, as, as women are being attacked, particularly black women, there are there's a segment of men that want to be women. Yeah, right? It's, it's like it's all going on at the same time. And these same men that want to be women – don't protect the actual women who are being attacked by men. There is, it, it has to be something spiritual of why all of a sudden, these last 20 years, the spotlight has been on women. And it's very, very true. And that's very true. You know, it really is. It's almost like the roles are reversing. Like it's a deliberate intention to reverse the roles. You know, and, and and it's just amazing how, you know, um, and we we're watching this happening right before our eyes, and and people get offended when you tell them you're not a girl. It's like you're not a woman. I mean, I don't think that you are, but in reality, you're not a woman. You know, you are not a woman. I think that it started in um, Hollywood when they had Martin and Tyler Perry and others dressing as women, you know, trying to imitate a woman. And a lot of the, uh, some of the young people, like she said, is spiritual. They looked up to these idols and they wanted to imitate. And so I think TV has indoctrinated the minds of a lot of the men. And it is spiritual. It's, something is going on. I mean, you know, because it's really the, the 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 way that everybody gets offended when you say you're not a woman. I mean, there's nothing else that you can say other than this takes place in the womb. And they're like, yes, we are women. No, you're not. You know? I get the whole thing of self-identifying, right? Um However, you're trying to take an identification that's already been set. I had a friend in college, and this was, you know, during the debate of whether or not uh, gays should be allowed to marry. And he was like, yeah, they're allowed to marry, but the thing is marriage is a religious um, entity. Why don't you find your own way of pair bonding, right? It's never let us have our own freedoms to do what we want. They want the same thing that you want and identifying it as the same thing. 
And it's not. Marriage is between a man and a woman, right? So why don't you create your own narrative? But it's never creating their own narrative. It's taking the identity of somebody who already has one. They want to be a woman, but there's already there's already a definition for women. You have to find your own definition. That's where I think one of the problems underlines what, where a lot of women don't understand is you're not a woman. You're trying to take a definition that's already been set. Well, do you think that it's what we said before, the attraction to femininity? Is that what it is? That, that that's what but it I, is that driving them to do that? I'm not, I just don't, I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily attraction to femininity because women are attracted to masculinity. So I don't think that I don't think that's necessary. It's like almost like they're trying to create something that's already been created, right? Because I'm attracted to masculinity. I'm attracted to masculine men, but I'm not trying to be one. Right, right. Well, yeah, that's true. So I think it has another spiritual aspect. Because it's like you can be attracted to femininity. Men are attracted to feminine women, but they're not trying to be one. It's a, it's something else. It's it's past what we think masculine and feminine is. It's something else. It's almost like taking someone's identity to, a, to an extent. Because there's nothing a man could do physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally that would ever allow him to actually be a woman. So why try now, you can be your own definition to identify as this, or this, but you will never be a woman because that definition has already been taken place. It's like a, a sunflower that's trying to be a rose. There's already right. a rose. Right, that's true. I mean, that, that's a good way to put that. It's really, and it has to be something spiritual taking place in the atmosphere for this to be such a dominant issue. I mean, because it's being pushed and forced on everybody to the point where, you know, we're allowed to. That's just like me saying I'm a white girl. I'm a white girl. Today I wake up today, I want to be Caucasian. Well, if you look at me, you can tell I'm not a white girl. I, I, I'm, I, was, I was raised a woman of color. I, was, I come from the tribe of Yehuda. I'm, I'm totally a, 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 a Negro and to the bone. But if I just decide tomorrow I want to be a white girl, everybody would look at me and they would twist their mouth up like, yeah, right, okay, you tripping. But but somebody can wake up one morning and say, well, I'm a woman. They put on lipstick and they can put on makeup and they can put on a dress. And then the society says, well, you have to accept that because that's what they want to do today. And it's like, where did that happen? It's just strange. It's strange. It is strange. It's all there's already a definition for what a woman is. That it someone's already in that place. Someone's already there. We've already defined what a woman and a man is. So what you're trying to do isn't meeting the definition. You're trying to squeeze yourself in and, and it it's not gonna happen. That's all it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and and it's being forced. You know, in my opinion, it's being forced. You know, the whole LGBTQ, whatever it is, the the whole agenda, it started out with the the Marriage Act. That's how it started, and they wanted to marry each other. And that was, you know, even though we're totally against it, you have to deal with whatever you choose to do on your own. That's between you and the Most High. Once we tell you what he said in his word, that's one thing. But it has just evolved into something else, and you wonder how much more will it evolve into because it's just not, it's, it won't stop evolving. And, and it's going against the natural grain of things to the point where you wonder what else has to happen before people wake up and understand, I really don't want to do this just because everybody else is doing it. And what got me was when the guy said that he had his genitals cut off, and they created a makeshift vagina with a makeshift entryway, and it, it it won't stay open because it's not designed to stay open, and it closes up like it's a wound, uh, and 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 they they have to keep uh, uh penetrating it with something for it to stay open. I mean. All of that right there will let you know that this is not the way this is supposed to be. This is not the natural order of things. And I'm like, wow. You know, but if you say that too much, 
people get offended and they, they, I don't know. I just really don't know. And I wondered the other day, I said, I wonder if this is the way it was in the days of Noah. I wonder if this is the way it was in the days of Lot. I just wonder how far they went. You know, they said far, that. But I think, Go ahead, sis. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying they went far, but I think this generation may have taken it to another level. That's just my opinion. Clearly. I mean, for real, because it's like, you know, at first we wanted to know why the parade. I mean, I still don't understand where the parade came from. Oh, you got your rights. Okay, we understand that. We 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 uh, uh, protest protested to, for our rights as well, but but the parade I still don't get it. But it's gone past that. It's like you know we're just gonna take it. We're gonna keep on evolving and evolving. And it's like what's gonna happen next? And you scared to say that? <laughs> like Lord, have mercy. I just, I don't know. It's just interesting how the attack on what the attack is. On the woman. I mean, you know, for the woman, because, and the most powerful thing that a woman has is wisdom. And the second most powerful thing she has is her womb. You know, and that's something that nobody talks about. And I remember, I don't know who the lady was, but she was being uh, 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 questioned by Congress, and they asked her, What is a woman? And she stumbled. And she started stuttering. I'm like, how hard is it to answer that question? Especially when you are one. Why are you why are you stuttering and stumbling like you're afraid you're gonna offend someone? You you should be able to stand there and say, This is what a woman is. I don't know. It's just very interesting. All of it is just extremely interesting. Extremely interesting to see the which way this is going and how far it's being taken, you know. But And a woman is a beautiful thing. She is a beautiful creature. She is. It, even if from, from the human species to the, to the fowl, the bird species, to the animals, to the beast, that female is a very unique entity. It's, she's just unique. And when you watch her and how she moves and how she protects her young and how she she has a certain um, uh, 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 sense of, of of importance about herself, it's amazing to watch. And it, it, you know what? It goes all the way back to the garden. When he said, I'm going to put enmity between you and the woman, between her seed and your seed. This is what it is. It's, um, it's that same it's that same thing right there that's taking is taking place. It's the same thing, you know. And I told the young man at the end of the we were talking. I said that is the most powerful book in the whole Bible because of, that's the beginning of it all. That's where it all started, and that's where the importance of it all starts. That is right there, you know. And the man is important too, but the man is not being attacked as much as the woman. He's not really being attacked. It's the woman. It's amazing. It is amazing. It is truly amazing to the degree of what this is, this is really done. You know, it's really something else to see. And the governments are backing it, and they're behind it, and everybody is supporting this stuff. And it's like, no. It's amazing. You know? Because I can't wake up tomorrow and want to be a white girl. That's just like they would look at me. Everybody would twist with their mouth like, yeah, right. You a white girl today. All right, if I want to be because that's everybody else is being what they want to be in spite of what it looks like. No. But that envy is actually, I think it's also a form of protection that there will always be a line, a barrier between ease and everyone else. There will always it will never consummate. It will always be a clear difference, a clear line of demarcation between us and them. He said you'll be around them, you'll mingle, but you will never be them and they will never be you. The most high that that was 
you know, in hindsight, it really was for your, for our protection, is that they will never, they'll get close. They'll get real close, but they'll never, they'll never be us. We are even. I will always keep enmity. There will always be a line that they can't cross. We can't, we will never, we will never be the same. We will never think the same. There will always be something different between Eve's seed, her seed, and everyone else. That's so very true. That is so very true. You know, that is so true. It's just amazing how, you know, when you're able to watch this with your own eyes and you're able to actually see the extent that this thing is going to, and you're like, wow, you know, it's, 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 it's something. I'm telling you, something to watch. You know, and then you and from a woman's standpoint, you're really watching it like, okay, you know, <laughs> you haven't even come close. I mean, it's so much to us, you know, even that even that kryptonite that we don't even talk about, that we won't ever discourage, dis, divulge to anyone. That kryptonite, you have no idea what it what it means to be a girl. You have no idea what it means to be a she. You have no idea the level of wisdom that comes with this gender. You just have no idea. This is something that was birthed and given by the Most High to that female part of himself. And it's just you have no clue what this is. It's more to makeup and high heel shoes and lipstick. It goes be way deeper than that. Because we have the power. to. We have so much power uh, uh, within ourselves that, like I always said, it's dangerous at some point if you if you choose to let it be. But it's a beautiful thing, you know. The whole thing is just it's just wrapped up into beauty, and, and you know, even at its most dangerous level, it's wrapped up into beauty because it's something that is irresistible to the man. It's irresistible, and they just don't understand what it is. They're like, man, if we could just if we could get away with you, get away with not having y'all, it would be you you couldn't do it. It just can't be done. It's just, it's you know, it's just, we're just too complex. You can't, it's just, it's it's more to it than, it's more wrapped up in it than high heel shoes and lipstick and eyelashes and, and pretend. It's way more to this thing than this. You know, it is. I mean, when you think about that, he said let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness and let them have dominion. And he told them what his image and likeness was, that it was male and female. This is too powerful for you to take and change with a law. You just can't do it. It's not going to be done. It's not. You got people walking around in costume, you know, wanting to be a, to play a character, but after a while you're going to get tired because it, it takes too much. You have to be born with this. Too much. You really do, in my opinion. You know, <laughs> I must say. You know, in my opinion, it, it being from a woman's standpoint, from from being in the skin of a woman, in my opinion, you know, it's just something that can't be, you just can't imitate it. It's too powerful to be imitated. It is. It really is. You know. And then just the wisdom alone is just too powerful to be imitated. So, you know, we just, we watch it and we just look in amazement. Like, really, I mean, you know, how far are you going to go? Where, how far is it going to be when somebody says enough is enough? You know, because it just can't be duplicated. There's some things that can't be duplicated. They can't. They really can't. You know, so I just think, you know, it's powerful. You know, it's just, it is, you know, but... I don't know. I think it's, you know, something else. And, uh, yeah, we can just we have this we have so much power to do so much with, you know, and then you can always tell her when she coming because she coming and you know, it's, it's and men love it. They love it. As much as they claim they can't stand us, they love us. And it's like it's the reason why. The reason why. So that's all I have for today. I mean, anybody else? Why is the woman so important? What is what makes her so special? You know, 
everybody tries so hard, you know, to mimic us. And it's like, no, you'll never get it. It's just not there. And let me say, you don't have enough of it because it's something that's given at birth. You don't have enough of it at, at conception. You know, because I remember uh, one of the people that was on our class from a medical standpoint when she said everybody starts out female first. You know, <laughs> that blew me away like, wow. You know, it's just too powerful. It's too powerful. Let me just see it. Oh, just the same. All right. Anybody else? No, I think that we covered most of it. You know, I think it's pretty good. We covered most of it. So, you know, and that's why I think we have to make sure that our young girls understand how important they are, how valuable they are. And when they do, our men will realize how valuable we are. You just, you know, and they do. You know, they just. You know, as a nation of people, when I'm talking about from a Hebrew Israelite standpoint, from a nation of people, we have just been hurt, and we've hurt each other, you know. But, you know, I think that our men do realize how how powerful, you know, we are and what we've contributed and, you know, and, and the things that we have brought, you know, to, to, to build a nation, to birth a nation, you know. And it's just been, a, it's been, a, it's an experience, you know, but it is a blessing. All praise be to the Most High. So, Sister Afian, I don't have anything else to say. No, nope, I don't think I'll say. I think we covered it all. And and people knowing our position and what we think a woman is. Um, and we are the most special, powerful, wisest, beautifulest, you know, passionate, loving creatures. And we need the world to know what a real woman is. And I think we covered it. All right, then. Well, you know, we're going to end this session. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This is women speaking from a woman's perspective. You know, we're here every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, and we would like for you to join us. Please feel free to join us at any time. The number where you can join us is it is 712-770-4066, and the access code is 154102-POUND. One five four one zero two pound. Shalom, shalom, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the show. Shalom, shalom.